Carletti with Times Union and TimesUnion.com. And welcome to 20 Things Plus, where we catch up with somebody previously featured on the Times Union's 20 Things You Don't Know About Me. Today we are joined by Katie O'Malley Maloney. Katie owns Katie O Weddings and Events in Albany. And welcome, Katie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Christy. It's great to be here. So you'll update us on a few of your original 20 things, share a couple new, and then we'll play a game. So let's get started. I know when you had your original one, your daughter Grace was in the picture, but you were a family of three and you're no longer a family of three. So what's happened since then? Oh my gosh, our family is complete now. And we welcomed our son, Everett Charles Maloney in November of 2019. And um, he's honestly a joy. We go, he goes by Charlie. We call him Charlie. (laughs) And I know that you had originally talked about loving to binge watch different shows, excuse me, binge watch different shows on TV. I'm guessing with two kids, a full-time job, running everything from home, has that gotten a little harder? And what are you binge watching these days? So Chrissy, I have to say the pressure when you reached out to me was like, you suggested like people are talking about hobbies or maybe activities or exercising. And I have done that. Don't get me wrong. But I'm like, I still love binge watching TV. And I am so grateful that the pandemic brought me Schitt's Creek (laughs) and it filled my soul as a planner of events. And for those of you, if you know, you know, the precious love scene in the barn when they're dancing gave me joy. And I can like literally tell you how I felt when I saw that scene. So ultimately my husband and I, we make the time. Usually I pass out, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, But I usually like that's kind of um, at the end of the day, once we get through bedtime, like just, it fills my soul, just like decompressing and not connecting to anything and enjoying like that binge feeling. But then I get like really sad when it's over. Like I have a, I have a sense of loss. (laughs) That is the tough thing about the ability to binge watch now with Netflix and things like that. You don't have to wait each week, but then also it can be over so soon that you start Googling, is there going to be another season or will there be more? Because it is sad when it's over. It's fun when it's happening, but sad when it's over. Exactly. (laughs) Right. And then another thing that's been keeping you busy, and this is one of your new things, you bought a new house at a slightly inopportune time. So how did that work out? You got in right under the wire, right? We did. It was actually, it was definitely a blessing. Um, So (laughs) we were house hunting and ended up finding a home in like fall of where were we what year was it 2019 it 2019 be- yeah <laughs> see I can't I can't help myself with um, not being able to keep track of things these days so we found this home and it was funny because I came to the open house with my mom and Grace and Nate was traveling so I was like nah it's probably I don't know it's overpriced I don't know whatever He then came home and the next weekend, we were both texting our real estate agent at separate times, like of houses we wanted to see. And he shared this house, but not knowing I came to the open house. Wait, so you went to the open house, but you didn't say, Hey, I went to the open house this weekend with my mom and Grace. No, because ultimately I was like, I was kind of one of those things where we just like last minute we snuck it in. Oh, right. And like, again, when he travels, sometimes I forget to tell him things when he comes back. Um, (laughs) So he texted our real estate agent and I was like, oh, honey, I already looked at that house. He's like, and I go, I don't know. I think it's way overpriced, like yada, yada. And so we came together and he was like, well, what about this? And what about that? And we don't have to ask off for full price. And I was like, okay. And that's just an example of how Nate and I completely compliment each other because he is more of like the realist and I'm like the immediate no or yes. You know, it's funny. I said inopportune time, but I actually guess it was an opportune time because it was before the prices went crazy. The, the market went crazy because you bought in February, right? You closed in February, right before Right. Actually, we closed in December. Oh, okay. And what was neat about it too, another joyous part was we got to bring the kids. We did close on December 20th. So on Christmas day, we brought the kids here and got to run Grace around the house and show her her new room. So it was sort of like Santa brought the house. Right. Oh, that's so fun. He didn't, but, um, and so we moved in February. <laughs> if February, only Santa was that'd be great. That would be amazing. So we moved in February 7th. So it's been like, it's weird because Nate and I are very much hospitable. We want to fill our home with people and love and celebration. So we were happy to have our brand new home where we could do all of that in. However, it was really tough because we literally went into lockdown like six weeks later. (laughs) Well, and you have another new home too, a new business home. I watched you kind of posting about this on social media, introducing it to friends and followers and clients. So what's going on there in downtown Albany? 
So um, after 12 years of success with KDO Weddings and Events, um, we figured what was next and um, was approached by Redburn Development to partner essentially with um, building a 12,000 plus square foot wedding and event space. Um, the Kenmore Ballroom right on North Pearl in downtown. Of course, when we signed on, there was no pandemic and people could do 300 person parties and dance all night. Um, so we were supposed to hold our first event in June of 2020. Obviously, everything has kind of shifted, um, but we're just putting one foot in front of the other. It's an amazing space. It's an exciting adventure. And we're happy to kind of be like pairing it with our planning and coordination, but then also focusing on managing the venue. Well, and I saw earlier this month, we finally got the go ahead right for 150 people at a wedding. So have people been reaching out now and saying, I'm, I'm eager, I'm ready, I'm ready to do this. I couldn't do it with 50. I didn't feel that I could, but I can do it with 150. Christy, it's really hard to answer that question right now. Um, unfortunately, the governor and the New York state guidelines haven't been too clear. So we have seen interest in booking and we've seen an uptick in booking because I think there's a little bit more consumer confidence. However, there are so many unknowns that it's kind of like a catch-22. Like, it's great and exciting, but who's responsible for all these things? Um, oh, good point. Yeah, so we're excited because there is, I mean, we are so blessed. We have had so much new business and um, a lot of people that, again, are feeling more excited and confident to celebrate, but we kind of have to temper that with, well, what are the rules and who's responsible? That's a good point. Yeah. Now, I know one thing I've always admired of you about you physically is I love your hair. I always compliment your hair. I think it looks amazing. It looks fantastic today, but also you have great skin. And I think you've been working on that and paying good attention to your, to your skin, right? Uh, on the pandemic. And you even won some sort of prize. Okay. So here's real talk, right? I feel like this is the kind of stuff, like I could come on here and be like, I watch, you know, binge watch TV and I don't take care of myself. <laughs> um, but I'm of the age of 40 plus. And thank you, by the way, for all those kind words. And I <laughs> entered an Instagram contest with the Williams Center. And I didn't even know what I was winning because you know how you just scroll like mindlessly and you tag people and whatnot. Well, I thought I won one thing and I won 12 things. It was over $2,500 worth of services. And I will tell you, you know, breaking news because I think we need to normalize Botox. I got Botox. <laughs> That's how your skin looks so good. Well, I, I and... Wait, oui, but also I did start because I realized that at this age, and I will give any 20 something this advice, pay attention to your skincare routine well before you're 40. <laughs> I'm telling you Botox now, I used to think, oh, people do that. And now every time I compliment somebody on their skin, it's because it's somebody who's in their forties, I am too. Yeah. They've done Botox and I'm thinking, well, it doesn't look like how you think it looks, the sort of Saturday Night Live skip version. Yeah. Instead, yeah. it looks like you look. It looks I, fantastic. Thank you. And I always thought, like, if you got it, you'd be like Real Housewives. Yes. And when you get when they were and the, they were great there because like they gave me the consultation. I'm like super nervous about stuff like that. And they told me everything and they like really gave it to me straight and like made me feel comfortable. And they weren't like, okay, here's like a thousand different things, and then I'm gonna look like not myself. And I just felt like you know what, it was time to do something that like made me feel good about myself. Like, <laughs> so I did it. So it was funny. Did anybody notice? Or you know what, it's funny. It great, or did they say, did you get something done? No, no, no. Nobody's been like, did you get anything done? Um, if I show it to people, they're like, oh, wow. Like my, my cousins or my family, like I try to make a certain face. But like even <laughs> Nate, Nate's like so funny because like he doesn't care. He was just like, I don't want anything to happen. Like I don't want you to get some weird thing where like your face falls to one side. <laughs> He's like, you're fine the way you are. And it's, again, it wasn't for him or for, for anybody. It was just like, I'm like, you know what? I want to give this a whirl. And I was like, I'm doing it. And I love it. Well, now I'm going to sign up for the Williams Center next contest because it looks awesome. And it, 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 it did great. So Katie, at this point in 20 Things Plus, we play a little game. I'm going to give you three clues to try to guess who will be featured on Monday's 20 Things You Don't Know About Me. So that's the, the print version, the original version like you did. Yeah. She's a female entrepreneur. So I'm going to give you that hint that's not part of the list. And your industries could very well cross. All right, are you ready? Ready. My husband, Andy Campbell, was a stand-up comic and TV morning show host. We met at a wedding in Greensboro, North Carolina while he was doing stand-up comedy full-time nationwide. My grandfather is from the Philippines and I named my company Coral and Blue after the colors of classic elementary lines, which are featured on every card. So she makes a kind of stationery 
I, I just, I have to admit, I don't, I feel awful. I don't know her name and I should, but I have seen her so much on um, Saratoga Living or like different Discover Saratoga um, blogs and such. And I think I need to know more about her because I don't know her name, but I, I know her business. You've got the right person that if you know it's Saratoga, she's got the Saratoga connections. Yes. So you you can, anybody who's watching can take a guess that at Times Union or at Jess Christie on Twitter or commenting on this video on the Times Union's Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. And then everyone else can find out either by Googling or better yet, tune in to timesunion.com at 7 a.m. on Monday and you'll learn more about it. Thank you so much, Katie. Appreciate it. Thanks, Christy.